The first reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Matthew, the sixth chapter, which can be found on page 788 in the Bibles in the pews. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The second reading is from Luke, the 11th chapter, which can be found on page 845 in the Bibles in the pews, and Pastor Tim is going to share a little bit with us first. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Just a little word of intro to this reading. Many of us don't, don't realize what we actually have in the Lord's Prayer. There was a tradition, a custom in Jesus' time for rabbis and teachers to, at some point in their career, summarize the essence of their teaching into one prayer. So what we have in the Lord's Prayer actually is much more than just a prayer to say, but it's a summary of the essence of Jesus' teachings, what was most important to him, what he wanted us to know above all things. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as Jesus taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. The third reading is from Luke, the 17th chapter, which can be found on page 852 in the Bibles in the pews. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. The word of the Lord. By way of intro to the John reading, uh, I'm retired now, but in my 35 years as a Lutheran pastor, I I was invited to what we call deathbeds often. And I always counted it a privilege to be there. It's sacred territory. What I noticed was life gets reduced down to its essence, its simplicity. It really gets reduced to two sentences between people. I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. Life reduced to its simplicity of love. Here in this John reading, Jesus is near the end of his life. He's talking to God. He's talking to the Father. And he's encapsulating everything that he came here to do into this one statement. His greatest desire of all was that everyone would be one. He says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. God. And we'd like to invite all the children up front for the children's message. But please do not knock over our dear Pastor Tim. (laughs) Well, I am so grateful to be here today because I have the opportunity to remind you of who and what you are. The slide you see on the screen tells an important truth. This is home. On the left side... You see this this condensed version, this packed version of these different beads and so on. That's representing God. God being spiritual energy of uh, light whose essence is love. Those pieces coming out of, of the image of God are souls. You are a soul. That's the real you. That's what comes into this world. That's what leaves this world. We talk about souls, but what are they? Best attempt would be they are spiritual energy of light. 
whose essence is love. That's the real you. You are a spiritual being. And it's important we remind ourselves of that because we get so attached to being human and in this life on earth, we forget who and what we really are. Now, being spiritual energy, each of us is. And we know this because we talk about someone's vibe. Have you ever done that? Oh, I get a really good vibe from her. Or I get a really uncomfortable, icky kind of vibe from him. Our spiritual energy, our true self, can be in or out of tune with the divine, with our source, with God. And what the Aramaic Lord's Prayer does, it provides attunements, nine attunements of our spirit, of our spiritual energy, to bring us back into harmony with God. Why is that important? <clears throat> because Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things that you worry about so much will automatically take care of themselves. In other words, <clears throat> when your energy is in harmony with God, when it's in tune, and it's in tune when it's operating from a place of love, it's out of tune when it's operating from a place of fear, or judgment, or anger. When you are in the flow of the divine, that's when God can work in you and through you, bringing you the life that God desires for you, your highest good, and you are an instrument of the kingdom of God on earth. It can literally flow into you and through you, and it's already within you. So these nine attunements of the Lord's Prayer, I invite you to turn to page uh, five in your bulletin. <clears throat> Five? Oh, you have an insert? Oh, we don't have that. Okay, it's an insert. Take that out. What you have there is an English translation of the Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic. He didn't speak Greek. He didn't speak English. He didn't speak Swedish. He spoke Aramaic. All his people spoke Aramaic. The entire Middle East spoke Aramaic. It was the common everyday language of the people. So when he taught the Lord's Prayer, he taught it in a language of their own. This is one translation, English translation of the Aramaic. Aramaic is a rich, interesting, fascinating language with words meaning many different things all at the same time. You can come up with many different English translations of the Aramaic. What this is, is my attempt to summarize all the work of Aramaic scholars that I studied and their translations, put, putting them all together into one. Now you will notice the difference here between the traditional Lord's Prayer that we learned and the Aramaic. The traditional Lord's Prayer that we all learned it's not bad. It's just limited. The Aramaic brings us to different levels of meaning, richer understandings of the spiritual truths that Jesus was trying to convey. So here we go. O birther, beloved father and mother of the universe, your name shines everywhere. You birth all things in unity. You're one light, one breath, one vibration within all that you've given life. Name of names, our small identity unravels in you. You give it back as a lesson. Where ears and eyes awaken, there heaven comes. That gives you an idea of how many meanings there are in the Aramaic. That's all our Father who art in heaven. That's it. So looking back on this, we live our lives in lives of separation. 
When we're here long enough on the earth, we start to see ourselves as separate from one another. I'm here, you're there, you're female, I'm male. We relate to each other according to gender, according to race, according to color, according to nationality, according to religion, or no religion at all. All of these define our human experience, but they are not the essence of who and what we really are. Underneath all those labels, we are all exactly the same. You think of someone who's completely the opposite of you, the same divine spiritual energy is within them that is in you. When Jesus teaches love your neighbor as yourself, he literally means it. As yourself. Your neighbor is you, literally. <laughs> you are your neighbor. There's no real difference between the two of you. So it makes no sense not to be kind to your neighbor. It makes no sense to hurt anyone. Because you're hurting the one. You're hurting everything and everyone. So when we pray this Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, we come back and we realize, oh my gosh, I've been living my life as a separate being. When in reality there is one light, one breath, one vibration of God within everyone and everything that I know and meet. You give, a uh, name of names are small identity unravels in you. We live our lives in such a small way. We're obsessed with my, I'm, I'm obsessed with my little me. <laughs> and my little agendas. And is, is everything working out the way I think it should? <clears throat> are people the way I think they should be? <laughs> Do people like me or not like me? Do people agree with me or not agree with me? We live our lives on this small level. But when we return to the Aramaic Lord's Prayer, it reminds us that we are part of something much, much bigger than our little individual selves that we create. And that's when life gets fascinating and life-giving and exciting and renewing. Where ears and eye, where eyes and ears awaken, there heaven comes. Jesus teaches that it's all about seeing. It's not about thinking. It's not about agreeing. It's about seeing, learning to see through the eyes of God. I see you through the eyes of God. And I see a sacred being. Just to give one example of the difference this could make. There would be absolutely no need for the Me Too movement if every male understood and saw the sacredness, the holiness of every female. If every male knew their own sacredness and holiness. You wouldn't even think about treating anyone in a sexually harassing way. You would honor them. You would respect them because you love and respect yourself. The same thing's in her that is in me. That's just one example of a difference. Our world, would how differently it would be if we saw our oneness. And so we retune our energy, raising it up to the one. Being here on the earth, our energy is lowered. We're in the lower energies of fear and anger and judgment so often. This prayer returns us back to raise our energy back up to the energy of love and oneness. And you can literally feel your energy pick up 
when you are in a place of love and compassion and oneness with everything around you. We let go of the clutter inside of busy forgetfulness. This is the hallowed be your name part. How cluttered we are. <laughs> our lives are cluttered. We got our stuff. We got our schedules. But Jesus is mostly talking about here. In here. Is it cluttered for you in here? Is there always a lot going on in here? Yes! <laughs> I've been studying neuroscience and all the studies I've studied all say the same thing. About 90 to 95% of the thoughts going through our minds are one of four things. They are either self-referential, they are either negative, they are either repetitive, we keep churning the same things over and over and over and over again in our minds. And I once again forgot the fourth thing. Dog, got it. <laughs> but you know what goes on in here. The Aramaic prayer, <clears throat> if you work with it, and I encourage you to take this home with you, turn it into a spiritual practice. That's what Jesus intends for it to be. Where as you work with it, you notice what's going on up in here and you just observe it. You're not attached to it as much. You let it go. And you create this open space to be for the thoughts of God to come in. When I began living this different spiritual journey seven years ago, I did not notice how much was going on in my head. Have you ever just sat and watched your mind? Just, just, just observe your mind. If you can detach enough just to sit back and watch it, it's scary in there. <laughs> oh yeah, the fourth thing is involuntary. <laughs> 90 to 95 percent of our thoughts are involuntary. They just pop up. They're just thoughts. That's all they are, is thoughts. And we believe them all the time. We've got this crazy roommate inside of us who's telling us all these crazy things all the time and we believe it. It runs our life. It's just thoughts going by. Clear the space. And so we raise our energy by entering into the open spaciousness of mind and heart and soul for the one to come and teach. There, we're back, we're back, I'm back. We enter the inner room, the inner room of the heart. Your light and still small voice welcome us home. God keeps a light on for us all the time. And it's within. It's within you. It never goes out. And we come into this inner space and we remember, the Aramaic says. What do we remember? We remember, ah. Oh, after all this craziness, I'm back home again in here. This is who I am. I am who I am in God and who God is in me. I'm back home. And the voice, the inner voice, welcomes us home. We find your love in ours, the Aramaic says. When you practice this enough, you will begin to see that your love has a source, and it is God. It is God's love living its life in and through you. So I'm retired now, but my congregation has gotten to be really big. It's the world. <laughs> and when I wake up in the morning, I practice this prayer, and I work with retuning my energy, my spiritual energy. And then I go out, and I call it B and C. To be 
the energy of light and love, to emanate that when I go out to Target, when I go out to the grocery store, to be that with my energy, to put it out there in a smile, in a kindness of an eye. And the C part is looking for that same thing in other people, looking for the light, looking for the divine within them. And once you start, here's how it works. Once you start seeing it in here, you start seeing it there. And once you start seeing it in him, you'll start seeing it in her and him and her. And you'll start seeing that it's everywhere. And it gets to be such a wonderful way to live. God is everywhere. God is within every single person. And once you see it, life becomes rich and full. And how we need that today, as we're constantly judging and criticizing each other, and people who are, we think are different than us, B and C. And so we retune our energy. We raise it up to be and see the light and love within us within everyone around us. Okay, we're getting back home now. Here we are, your harmony on earth that is in your universe. The nature has this intricate, delicate, precise balance to it. Everything is interdependent. The universe has a, has a connection. Everything works together in harmony. The Aramaic talks about the way of balance, the path of balance. Living in harmony with the path of balance. Where I am in harmony with the energy of the, God, of divine, of the divine. And when I am that, I show the harmony myself in how I live. Grow through us this moment's bread and wisdom. Give us this day our daily bread. In the Aramaic, it means much more than just bread. It also means wisdom, counsel. It paints the picture of coming to God for counsel. And I think about how important that is this day when people are so obsessed. <laughs> We're so obsessed with our opinions about everything. Everybody's just attached to their opinions and wants everybody to know their opinions about everything. I am right. I am so right. <laughs> and you are so wrong. And let me tell you why you're so wrong. And no one's budging. No one's listening. This paints a picture of God. I am open. You teach me. What are your thoughts? When I began this spiritual journey, journey, I began every day by saying, I know nothing. <laughs> I know absolutely nothing. At the age of 59, 29 years of being a pastor, I know nothing. And that allowed me to take in new things, new ideas, new thoughts, things that I thought it was all this when it's actually this. <laughs> and I can't stretch my arms wide enough for how big truth is of God. God, I want to think your thoughts. I'm tired of my thoughts. Help me think your thoughts. Know your thoughts. Here you untie the knots of failure binding us. Haven't we all known what it's like when we can't forgive ourselves for something we've done. And it literally, talk about energy, it literally feels like a knot tied up inside of us. But when you sit and work with this prayer and allow the love of God to loosen that knot within you, you will know a freedom. I met 
many times with what we call dysfunctional families to the point where I'm wondering, about, are there any functional families? <laughs> but you know when you're in a dysfunctional situation, you walk into the room and it just feels like everything's just tense and tight. So this loosening within allows us to release the strands we hold of others' guilt. There are literally cords of energy between us. And when we release them, the Aramaic says we return back to our original oneness. That's our original oneness with one another, with God, which never leaves us. It's returning back to that and living again from that. Don't let the surface things of this life turn us away from our purpose. We all know about the surface things of life. What is our purpose? I have the audacity to stand before you today and tell you <laughs> who and what you really are and why you're here. What it's all about. It's not that hard. It's hard to live. <laughs> you are spiritual energy of light whose essence is love. And you are here on the planet as a human being to grow, for your soul to grow, mature more and more into the likeness of its source, more and more into what it already is, which is love. That's the ultimate goal, love through the experiences that you have here on this earth. I never realized how much I was resisting life. Things were coming at me from the outside, experiences, people, and I was constantly judging them. This is good, this is bad, I like this, I don't like that. But with this new understanding that the Aramaic brings you to, the question you ask is, if I'm here for the growth of my soul, then what is in this for me? What is in this experience for me to learn? What does that person have to teach me? That's why you're here, to learn and grow and mature more and more into the likeness of your source through the experiences that you're having. All of them, everything, everything, everything comes to you as teacher. And so we move on and we raise our awareness. We raise our harmony, our balance, our nature, our spirit back up to being a student. Okay, we're, we're working, we're working, we're getting there. But keep us present to help needed now. Every spiritual teacher, Jesus among them, talked about being present, being in the moment, so that you are present to help needed now. From you arises every vision, song, and all power to do. May this inner home be the ground from which all our growth comes. Amen. The, growth, the goal of this prayer as Jesus taught it is for us to come home to God within. And from this inner space, this place within, out of that comes everything that we think, everything that we say, and everything that we do. We are to live from the inside out rather than the outside in. We live from the outside in too often. It's constantly outer circumstances that are determining our well-being. If they're going the way we think we, they should, then we're okay. If they're not, we're not. But if living from within this space, it's, all, it's okay in there. <laughs> and you know that it will be okay. You are this peace, this calm, this grace, this love, no matter the outer circumstance. Amen.